95 years. Oh God, 95 years is a long time. This church has been around for a very, very long time. Oh God. My Bible tells me in the book of St. Matthew chapter 4 verses 18 through to 20 and St. Matthew 19 27 to 29 and Jesus was walking by the sea of Galilee. Saw two brethren, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea. For they were fishers. And he said unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they straight away left their nets and followed him. Let's move over to Matthew 19, 27 to 29. Then Peter answered and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and follow thee. What shall we have therefore? And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that he which have followed me in the regeneration when the son of man shall sit in the throne of his glory he also shall sit upon 12 thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel and every one that hath forsaken houses or brethren or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or land, for my name's sake, shall receive an hundredfold, and shall inherit everlasting life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the question that you need to ask God tonight is, Lord, what is in it for me? Say, Lord, what is in it for me? Hallelujah. And when you ask God that question, the answer you're going to receive from the Lord, the Lord is going to tell you, to wait for the promise. Say, so wait for the promise. Wait for the promise. Wait for the promise. When we look in the scripture and we see what was happening, here you got two men. These men were businessmen. Amen. They were running their own operation, running, running their business. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. They were partners. Amen. Doing their thing. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. They were busy working. Amen. Earning a living. They weren't sitting idle. 
Amen. They were engaged in work. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus came along, amen, looking for workers. Hallelujah. Looking for workers. You know that they are fishermen. That's one of the most dangerous, amen, industry to be in. in. Hallelujah. The sea can be tempestuous at times. Hallelujah. You got to go through some hard time, some difficult time. But Jesus looked upon them and said, these men are capable. They are qualified. Hallelujah. I need them. Oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord need you. Oh, hallelujah. You see, the Lord gave them a promise. Hallelujah. He gave them a promise. He said, follow me. Hallelujah. And I will. Amen. Make you fishers of men. He didn't ask them to follow him empty handed. He said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Do you know that it's impossible for God to lie? Do you know that God can't lie? That any promise God made to you that he will fulfill it? know how we stay oh god we like to get promises hallelujah we like to get offers hallelujah and the politicians know it when it's election time hallelujah they know what to say amen to win your vote they will come and make you all the promises in the world they come and promise you everything and the Lord know how men are. Amen. Men love promises. But those elections, amen, hallelujah. Oh God, politicians, they make empty promises. And as soon as they get elected, they break the promise. They forget about you because they get the vote that they want. You know, I'm just in Jamaica alone. It happened in every country. I'm from London. Hallelujah. And it happened in London as well. Hallelujah. One politician came and offered free tuition. Amen. Hallelujah. To university students. And guess what? As soon as they win the election, they increase tuition. Hallelujah. Pray the promises instantly after they get elected. But we get back to the scripture. We see here there was Peter. Peter knew how men were. Hallelujah. Peter responded. Hallelujah. To the call. And not only him, amen. But the other disciples, amen, responded to the call also. And they had an expectation. They anticipated for something to happen. And they have been following. Left the business. Lock up shop. And following Jesus. And they were following him for a good while. Hallelujah. And guess what? They have to look into themselves. And I guess they were talking among themselves. Amen. But nobody was bold enough to ask the question. They had to, amen, discuss it with the spokesperson for the group. His name was Peter. So Peter, the spokesman, have to present, amen, the question to Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh God, hallelujah. You see, and any, any, any disciple could have got to ask Jesus that question in her. It's got to take somebody who was bold and fear no foe, amen. Somebody who wasn't, wasn't afraid of the wind, amen. And the wave, someone was brave. Peter, look upon him. I said, Lord, it's been a while now. It's been a while. We have been following you for a long time. In other words, we have forsaken not only me, but all of us who are following you. We have forsaken everything. Everything. We let go of everything. No more money not coming again. Business locked down. We, we, we stopped going 
mission. We forsake it and we follow in you. So now, we want to know. We want to know what. What is in it? What is in it? What is in it for me? What is in it for us? After all my sacrifice, what will I get in return? What will I get in return? And if you haven't started yet asking the question, you just start asking Jesus Christ the question. Hallelujah. Because if you're not asking no question, amen, there won't be no growth or no progress in your life. When you're faced with difficult and trying circumstance, you have to ask the question. Say, Lord, why? Why, why, why you allow me to go through all of this? Why is the purpose of all of this? When you become a child of God and start walking for Jesus Christ, some situation, amen, occur in your life. Amen. It makes you wonder. It makes you wonder if you're really living for Jesus. You don't believe me? Look at, look at John. He was like the forerunner for Jesus. Preaching. Hallelujah. Preparing the way for the Lord. Hallelujah. Come a time in John's life when John was preparing the way for Jesus, find himself in prison. Amen. Couldn't believe what was happening. Had some brothers, some disciples, my God, tell them, say, look, man, go talk to Jesus, man, and ask him, are you really the Christ, or should we go looking for another? Because if you are the Christ, I should not be faced with these turbulences in my life. Oh, God. Oh, God. oh hallelujah. Hallelujah. Trials come to make you stronger. Trials come to make you stronger. And look how Jesus answered. Oh God. He answered the question. Oh God. But he, hallelujah. Yes. He did say, Oh God. The answer is back to John. But get back to the text. Oh God. Jesus. In response to Peter's question. Let me tell you something. You see, those of you who have followed me, those of you who go through the same thing that I go through, those of you who endure the same thing that I endure, those of you who have the same suffering or the same pain that I have endured, those of you who make it through to the end with me, you see, when I come back, in the regeneration, hallelujah, I got a special, I got a special place for you, hallelujah. I've got a special position for you, oh God, oh God. When I sit upon my throne, guess what? I'm going to have you sitting right next to me, hallelujah. And when you sit next to me, you are going to be decision maker for the children of Israel. You will sit on the throne and judge Israel with me. Hallelujah. 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 How many know about judgment? Hallelujah. A lot of us see judgment as sometimes a bad thing. But you know sometimes judgment can be good. You know sometimes the judge can rule in your favor. Hallelujah. Do you know sometimes the judge can rule in your favor? Hallelujah. So you approach the judgment with uncertainty. Don't know what is going to happen. So when you 
should have been condemned. Jesus Christ said, there is therefore, oh God, there is therefore now, 